this video, we're going to be looking at how we can scan files and directories to uncover hidden secrets. Secrets, what I'm referring to is API keys, credential pairs, security certificates, really, really sensitive items that we often use uh, when we're programming or writing code. The problem is we want to make sure we kind of have visibility over where these secrets are. Now, one of the worst places they end up is inside our Git repositories. And there's lots of videos that you can look at about how to scan uh, your Git repositories or how to set up commit hooks to be able to detect these secrets. But in this video, as I said, we're going to be looking at how we can find these inside file directories and file paths. Now, I think it's important to note uh, some of the key differences when we scan Git repositories, we scan the entire history. So that means that if you've committed a secret and then removed it and committed over that and made a whole bunch more commits since, since then, that secret will still exist in the history of that Git repository. When we're scanning file directories, even if they are Git repositories, we don't scan the whole history of it. We just scan what is available in that file directory. So that's just an important note to kind of uh, know when we're scanning these files, because if we are going to download a whole bunch of Git repositories, and we scan them and we don't find any secrets, doesn't mean that they're not there in the history. All right. So now that that's out of the way, we can uh, move ahead and look at how we can do this. So the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the GG Shield GitHub page. Now, GG Shield is the open source CLI tool from GitGuardian uh, that we're going to use to detect these secrets. So if we scroll down, what we're going to be looking at is the scan function. So we're going to go down here to scan. And as you can see here, we have the path option. So we're going to be using scan path, which is there to scan files and directories with a recursive option. Recursive option means that it's going to go further into other folders or other directories within that directory. So it's going to keep going uh, until it reaches basically the end of all of those directories. Uh, without this option, it's just going to scan that one level. Uh, so we definitely will most likely want to use the recursive option here. So we can go ahead and do this. So I have my terminal open here. And obviously, I have ggshield installed. If you don't have ggshield installed, you can use the command pip3 install ggshield. And that will go ahead. Now I have mine installed already, so um, that may look different for you. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be running that command. So let's go GG shield scan path. Now again, we want recursive. And then we want our file path here. So I'm just going to copy in my file path. So I have a folder. Uh, so users McKenzie documents, repositories, and then I have a, f a file here called backup. So this backup is the uh, file directory that I want to scan. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And unfortunately, we get an error. So the reason why we get an error is it says down here that Git Guardian API key is needed. So we utilize the Git Guardian detection engine, which is quite powerful, but it does mean we need an API key to connect to it. So we're quickly going to generate one of these. So over in the Git Guardian dashboard, so we can go to dashboard.gitguardian.com. If you don't have an account, you can create one in a couple of seconds. It's totally free. You can even sign up using GitHub if you wish. And then on the left, we have an API tab. So we're going to go ahead and create a new API key, and I'm going to call it directory scanning. And we just want the scan scope. We don't need to worry about the incident scope at this stage. We're going to go ahead and create that. And this is our API key here. Now, remember, uh, I'm showing you mine, but only because I'm going to delete it later. Uh, but this is sensitive, so don't share it with anyone on YouTube like I am. And now we need to add this in as an environment variable. Now, we can do this in a couple of ways. Uh, we can use the export command which will create an environment variable for this terminal, uh, for this kind of terminal window. Um, but then we'll have to do that each time. And we're going to have to store that, that key somewhere. We can also add it in uh, to our, our bash RC file, for example, so we can load it in regularly. Or we can add it in using a .env file, because we need to have the .env file in the directory that we're navigated in. 
So not the directory that we want to scan, but the directory that we're currently in, which is my root user directory. But that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a new file called .env. We're going to open this file. And in here, we're just going to create a variable, git guardian underscore API underscore key. Now it has to be named this and we're going to go ahead and save this file here. Now we're just going to run that exact same command that we put before. And this time, hopefully it should work. So we are already got to the next stage and it's asked us, it's calculated how many files in total will be scanned. So it's 36. Do we want to do this? Yes. Now, obviously it might be a whole lot more in a real life example, but here we have the results and we have quite a lot of them. So this has been a, a project that I've been using to kind of test out some, some different secrets. So hopefully you don't have this many secrets inside your directory, but maybe you do. So you can see here, it actually gives us a lot of information. So we have the, the type of key that it is here. We have a Postman API key. And what's cool is that we have validity checks as well. So it's actually saying that this is an invalid Postman key. Uh, and so we can go down here. We have Slackbox tokens. Again, it's actually invalid. But here we have an AWS key, which is saying that it's valid. This is just a cool feature to be able to show that when we're scanning this, we can really quickly check which ones are critical and need immediate attention and which ones we can kind of investigate a little bit later on. So this is great if we have like this, a huge amount of incidents. So we can go through and, and review all these. And now it also gives us the file that we are, that we're in. And if we want, we can actually export this information into a JSON file so that we can review it or add it into a different dashboard later on. So let's quickly have a look at how we can export this as a JSON file. So back in my terminal, we can run the exact same command as before, but we're just going to add one small option in. So just quickly looking back at the GitHub page, we'll see that we have some different options. For instance, you'll notice that the secrets were all hidden. Um, they were where they are, what's in them, but we didn't. We can show secrets to be able to show all the secrets in the CLI. And here we have the option of JSON. So we just need to add this after. Um, just where our options go. So we move our across and we're just going to add in here, JSON. We have two dashes, run that. And again, it's going to prompt us. Yes. Do we want to scan the 36 files? Of course. And then this time, instead of giving us that nice display, it gives us uh, our JSON format. Now, obviously on the screen, this doesn't look all that appealing, but when we add this into uh, a JSON file or we handle it uh, correctly or input it uh, using a program, then obviously we can manipulate this data and be able to visualize it in different ways, which will help us remediate these incidents. So there you have it. That's how we can scan files and directories for secrets using GG Shield. I hope you found the video useful. Give it a like if you did. Uh, write me a comment if you're having any trouble or any questions in the comment section, or you can reach out to me on Twitter at Advocate Mac. Uh, always happy to hear from you. Stay tuned for more GG Shield videos, and thanks for tuning in.